Hey, what's up, everybody? It's OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here with another edition of The Mikey Show. And today, I want to bring you through the anatomy of a world-class Hi-Fi rig. The audio system that I've built here is a culmination of about 24 years of building a system. And finally, I've crossed the line uh, about three years ago with this rig. And uh, I want to go through what makes it so good and what are the parts. So hold on while I do that for you. Okay, so first of all, realize that I am a dealer. So a lot of the things that I have in here are different pieces for demo that if this was only for my own personal listening rig, you know, I wouldn't need one, two, three pairs of main speakers. Uh, you know, but what we're using right now is the big speakers, the panels that you see on the end. That is my reference. Now, this rig has taken, like I said, 24 years roughly to build. Um, and that's just like trying different things, moving around, uh, changing things out until finally I crossed the line. Now I, I don't need to change anything. And what it did was it gave me a, a reference level from which I can judge everything else because so far I cannot compete with what I have here uh, teamed up with these subs. So my front mains are a four-way speaker. There is a tweeter, a mid-range, and a woofer, and then, su and then subwoofers. So there's one, two, three, four on each side. Here you can see it better if we go here. Now, something for you guys to understand and gals to understand, these speakers are Analysis Audio Amphitreons, uh, one down from the top of the line. They're $30,000 panels made in Greece. These things rolled off too high. They were starting to roll off at 15K when I measured them. Um, I got with the, the uh, company and I told them about my measurements. They said, yeah, that sounds about right which didn't make sense to me, um, so I had to fix them. So what I did was I put, um, we cut a baffle out of plywood. We made our own baffle. We added a magna pan, five foot ribbon tweeter to help bring my 20K up. Now, in addition to that, if I walk around to the back, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Uh, you see that piece right there? Um, that is a Townsend super tweeter pointing straight up into the ceiling. That little block up there is just to wedge to hold that uh, baffle in because we didn't attach the baffle to the speaker. We just wedged them into place uh, for effectiveness. You know, I didn't want to drill into the speaker or do anything like that to try and mount them. Um, we just kind of stuffed them in there, right? And so they're in place and we can rotate them if we want. So those are my main speakers, okay? So there's there's three, pan there's three a, a tweeter, a mid-range, and a woofer right here. Now, and then there's the subwoofer. So we have four, four, four sets of frequency per side, and I have four amps per side, or four channels. So on the top, for the tweeter, we have the NAT Audio Magma tube amp. That handles everything from 2,000 hertz and above. Then we go down. This is a very small. This just brings up the crossover point. This is uh, down to maybe, let's see, I think it's like 1,600 or something like that. And then we hand off to this, this woofer goes very high. It goes up to, yeah, like I said, 1500, I think, something like that. Um, and uh, so that's the mid-range. And then these these are two, the mid-range and the woofer are on that Amphitreon panel. And the mid-range and the woofer are powered by this 150 watt per channel stereo amp. It's a class AB stereo amp made by Jeff Rowland. It is the 555. So the Roland 555 handles the duty for the woofer and the mid-range. And then the tweeter is here. And then the subwoofer is powered by its own plate amp, which is right back there. You can see it's a sublime, or I'm sorry, rhythmic audio uh, plate amp, which has very many settings on it. You can really tweak this puppy. It's got all sorts of things and, and ways to, to tweak and, and get your bass perfect, which is what we've done in this room took us probably two months of tweaking to get it dialed into where they are now, um, which is uh, seamless integration. Uh, these, by the way, these speakers here are another set. These are soup to nuts with the crossover inside. Uh, Fisher & Fisher 770s, one down from the top of the line. Those are $40,000 uh, slate speakers made out of slate, 100% slate. But again, these are not hooked up, nor are the TADs, which are the highest uh, level of speaker out of Japan, um, utilizing many patented technologies and just amazing uh, 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 fit and finish on, on those speakers. Those are monitors that are all extraordinaire. We're not using those, okay? So again, for the world-class system, we've got these big uh, panels here, the three-ways and then the subs, and they are being powered over here by, by this. So 
what we've got here, or this is the front end rather, it's not being power, powering them, it's giving them signal, okay, to the amps. So what we've got here in the middle is a streamer by Playback Designs made in the United States, created by the guy who invented sample rate conversion. So there is no other, there, I think he's the smartest uh, uh, digital engineer in existence right now because he invented sample rate conversion. Uh, so everybody else followed him. Okay, he was the pioneer. So how is anybody else gonna 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 do better when he's grandfather digital music? As far as I'm concerned, he started his career working for Studer, which you see in A80 from Switzerland right there, because Andreas Koch is Swiss, and he started working for Studer, making their first digital gear uh, back in the 70s, late 70s. Then he came to. Maybe I have my time off. Maybe it was the early 80s. Anyways, then he came to Sony and created SACD. On and on, his story is pretty great. He went from Sony. Sony, he hired Ed Meitner of M Labs. They created M, M Labs. And then three years later, he did playback designs. Here is the top of the line playback designs, MPD8 DAC. So Ethernet comes out of that router back there. It comes into the Edelweiss streamer by uh, Andreas Koch, our playback designs made in California. And then uh, up to the DAC, which is MPD-8. This is made in California. And this uh, does the conversion. It's a DSD single bit DAC. And this converts to two channel, left and right. Now we come down to the bottom to this 11 stereo active crossover. This is an active differential crossover. As you can see, I'm trying to get out of the shadow here. I hand soldered up these boards, okay? Um, this was made for me. I had it made, I, had it, I commissioned an engineer that already made uh, analog crossovers to make me one without op amps. So this is completely discrete and it's completely differential, meaning it's fully balanced. As you can see at the back, it's all XLRs. Now, this rig has zero RCAs in it. Why is that? Because RCA is consumer grade stuff, okay? I don't care how much you wanna argue about it, RCA is never as good as XLR, period. Now. I guess we can't say never. A shitty designed RCA is not as good as a, 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 I mean, a shitty designed XLR is not as good as a, as a, a world-class level designed RCA. But generally speaking, RCA was created for the consumer market. XLR is a pro level um, interface that is used on microphones. It's used in, in outboard gear. XLR is what they use. It's always balanced, okay? Whether it's XLR or whether it's TRS, quarter inch phono plug, in the professional arena, it's it's never RCA, ever, okay? Um, don't kid yourself. So if you can do your rig 100% balanced front to back, it's always going to be better, assuming that it's done right. Now, as you know from me, this one's done right, okay? So this is a fully balanced system from front to back until we get to the amp because you can't make a single-ended triode balanced. So that circuit is not balanced, but it's got an input transformer. Everything else is balanced all the way to the amp coming out of the DAC. Okay, so now you have this. We come from here. Uh, the computer spits out a data stream of music up to here, which converts it from digital to analog. It comes out analog left and right down to here, which divides it into one, two, three, four different frequency ranges per side. Subwoofer, woofer, mid-range, and tweeter. Okay, so this goes to the tube amp. This one goes to the Roland one channel. This goes to the other channel of the Roland. This goes to the to the plate amp, okay? Because there's four outputs, as you can see on the back in there. You can see all those row. That's eight outputs, okay? Two inputs, eight outputs, okay? That's how a crossover works. So it goes out to these, and, and then we, we go over to the amp. I didn't tell you about this. This is the um, most powerful uh, single-ended triode in existence, 160 watts of pure Class A single-ended triode. There is no other rival to an amp like this. Um, I don't even know if there may be one or two copycats out there that came, but these guys pioneered the GM100 in its use as a single-ended triode in this amp. Um, these are 40K um, per pair and worth every penny uh, in terms of their sonic quality. There's nothing has the shimmer and just that sort of realism that a vacuum tube creates uh, from 2000 up where it's all the magic. Yeah, magic is really in the mid-range, which goes lower, but um, I'm telling you, this thing does magic from 2K and above. Now, in our room, we have room treatments. We've got, as you can see, there the, on, on each door, there's doors back here. These are tube traps, by the way. These are ASC tube traps. 
This is patented tube uh, tube trap design, which are base traps, and uh, they they are um, they have half is absorptive and half is reflective. Over here, we have diffusers that go on on, on each door. I've got diffusers which help kind of scatter the way that the reflections come instead of just coming straight off a door. Um, again, these are these are bigger tube traps that are fatter to soak up some of the big uh, standing waves that might be back there or some of the waves, the base waves. Um, again, cables are a mess, but here is a Shakti holograph, um, which is basically just something for reflection. And it reflects at different frequencies. Those are two different woods with two different densities. So it reflects at different densities. Different frequencies excite this thing and reflect. And, and it looks cockamamie and weird as shit, but it works. Trust me. Um, you put it in and you can rotate that top. You see how it's a little thing that can rotate on a little spindle. And it helps lock in the image even better than it already is. It just helps support it. Same with this high-end Novum piece. This is a resonator, acoustic resonator, which basically activates at a certain frequency and it resonates strengthening in, in the vocal harmonic range. So it gives a great center image. It helps to lock in that center image. And you don't need to use DSP or anything like that. See, I'm a guy that likes to use passive things like bronze and like different kinds of woods for reflection to actually make my room and correct for the room and to, to solidify the image and get it even better. Uh, I do it that way rather than trying to use DSP, which to me sounds like an effect when I listen to it. Um, and so that is that over here. These are just things that you guys need to buy and take off my hands. So call me up because I have got some magic pieces. You guys don't even know what the hell this is, do you? Nobody knows what the hell that is. Oops, it's upside down. I've got it upside down, but nobody knows what that is. That DAC is from Japan. It's of the highest level. That DAC is high, is as high level as these TADs. And um, $35,000 um, when it was new, I'd sell it for eight grand. And it's brand new. I got it brand new in the box. Um, and it's just been opened and used a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, so that is a world-class rig in a nutshell. This is what's involved in a world-class rig. Oh, I almost forgot. The stand here, very important. This is a live vibe audio, live vibe, just like it sounds. Um, this is uh, a uh, vibration sink. So this helps pull vibration out of the gear. Every piece of gear has its own vibration from its power supply. Okay, you also get airborne vibration that happens in the chassis. So that's why people build these chassis so big and chunky and heavy is so that they don't resonate with the, with, with the speakers, with the, with the sound in the room but they make their own vibration. So maybe they don't resonate, but they still create their own vibration that needs to be drained out. That's what these things do underneath. Goes into steel um, shelves and down into steel arms with uh, whatever you want to call them, bronze grabbers, or I don't know what they, they've got a name for these discs, the things that go on the end that, that help um, transmit the vibration. The reason bronze is used or brass is used is it's the most resonant of the metals. Um, you could, if you really wanted to go pedal to the metal, you would do full shelves in bronze or brass, but, you know, try pricing that. Um, this works phenomenally, and um, they're available on Live Vibe Audio. Um, that is not something I sell. I just promote it because it's awesome. Here is a power strip. Um, nothing um, other than a really kick-ass level power strip. Um, I'm going to wipe that scratch off. Um, that I have made. This is a Viristar product. There's one that's out that's not as extravagant as the ones I made with the grounds on them. Um, but anyways, so that is a world-class system. Um, over here, we have listening chairs. We listen. In this room, because of the way it's situated, I have to put my head against that rear wall. Normally, that might be murder for some people. I make it work extremely well. You can ask anybody who has been here uh, it probably sounds better than anything they've heard, even with their head up against the back wall. Um, this is a dual purpose room, so we can take these chairs and you see how they rotate. We can drag them across the floor. You just pull them across the floor, rotate them, and we've got a movie theater here with in-wall. These are uh, Bolender, Grabner, BG Radia in-walls. Uh, these are all planar magnetic as well that are uh, planar magnetic speakers and uh, a 110 or 120. 12 or something like that, 115 actually, it's, a, it's bigger than a 110. Um, uh, acoustically transparent screen, there is, a, there is a, um, a, a, a horizontal center channel behind that uh, perforated screen, and then we've got the JVC projector up here, so when we want to watch movies, we can just pull these, these things across the room, but I rarely watch movies in here. 
we are always listening to music. Ah, and um, furthermore, um, on the walls, okay, every wall in here is covered with natural wool. This is an eighth inch thick natural wool uh, wall covering, which helps cut back the slap echo. And then we've got some panels on the door here. We made this out of rock wool and made our own to cover the window right here. Um, and then there's another one of those over that window that's there. Um, so we've done some room treatment as well. Um, there's my gold record for being top global seller of playback designs. Um, anyways, and uh, the chairs, since they're leather, which is a reflective surface, I have put natural sheepskin covers that I had custom made for these chairs. They go over the top and they prevent reflections when you're sitting in the chair and listening. So in a nutshell, there is your, uh, your anatomy of a world-class audio rig. I will do some sound test shortly, but thanks for joining. See you.